Hey, welcome to that Doorman. On this podcast, I'm talking to a good friend of mine, Bernard. Now, Bernard's been a friend of mine for a long time, but I haven't caught up with him for a good few years. Um, I spoke to him for over an hour about his uh, fly fishing and his life with fly, fi- fly fishing. And uh, really didn't want you to miss anything, so I decided to cut it in half. This is a two-part episode. Um, so take a listen. hope you enjoy really see what he's saying about the countryside and what's going on in it i think it's really really worth the listen so cool they'd be very lucky to get five thousand for one really yeah and mine, I spent you know, 1,500 quid on her each rod. I wouldn't get 500 back now. You can't give them away in May. It's mental, isn't it? Well, yeah. yeah. So, but, and it's partly because people haven't got the time, and it's yeah. partly because they're not interested, and partly because they're doing other things. And yeah. People, people want that instant catch game, really. now, don't they? People want that instant... Don't want to work for it. It's the carp. It's the carp angler syndrome, isn't it? Yeah. Everyone wants to go and sit on a pool, catch twenty pound fish, go home, go out and do the same thing next time. Yeah. Right. I have to check everything now because I went and done one um, a few weeks ago with a well, he's a builder but a f- full time poacher. And um, I had to go back and redo it because I'd bugged the whole thing up. So I'm constantly watching the damn thing now. <laughs> Make sure I get it right. Yeah, the other thing that's happened, of course, down here is they've changed the bylaws. And it might be a bit excessive to say they've killed salmon fishing on the Severn as a sport. Yeah. Um, because the Severn to somewhat unique river in the sense of the size of it and certainly in this part because it's a mixed fishery um, it, it's not the sort of place you can go there are one or two places but it's not the sort of place you can go with a fly rod you know it's not that uh, and if you get beyond the middle of the year you end up with lots of weed everywhere so spinning's difficult I've uh, spanned seven and I've spanned the seven. I'm yeah, not, and I'm not a fisherman. It'll, it'll be in the early part of the year, you see, yeah. it, when before the growth's on. But once you get the the into the middle of the year and beyond, really the only way you could fish most of the seven, certainly the middle reaches from the confluence, which is what I know, down to, well, not to the east of the county, but Iron Bridge area. You, you you've got to you've got to use a bait because it's the only way you can get somewhere near where the fish is and they've now banned bait fishing completely Uh, if you spin you can only use a single hook of a prescribed size so you can't use a a treble at all really and if you fly fish you can only use a single hook the stupidity of it all is that if on the 16th of June, when the, the course season starts, you go down to the river and put a worm on a hook and chuck it in for a barbel, you're perfectly legal. And if a salmon takes it, it's nothing you can do to stop it. No. But the bylaw says you can't fish for it. Uh, the, uh, the other thing that's happened is that given the rise of the Welsh Government, the everything above the confluence at Melville is now controlled by the National Rivers, or well, no, the Natural Resources Wales, and everything below is the Environment Agency, and so you've got two lots fighting about what yeah. the rules are going to be. Too many chiefs. And the NRW are, have fallen out with every salmon ang- every game angler in Wales in the last few years, partly because the. The, the summer season starts in February and runs through to uh, early October on the 7th, a little bit later on the Welsh rivers, most of the Welsh rivers. The course season finishes on in the middle of March and starts in the middle of June. Uh, given that most salmon anglers didn't bother to buy their licence until June because whilst you can fish 
in between February and June. You, you couldn't use worm and you couldn't take a fish. And given they're all old timers out of the likes of the West Midlands who used to come to catch a fish, um, everybody stopped buying their licenses until the beginning of June. Yeah. Two years ago, um, they suddenly decided, they <laughs> suddenly decided that there was a catastrophe occurring and numbers were disappearing based on the catch returns from the previous year which was a dry year and nobody caught or fished anything. Uh, so they brought in emergency rules and changed everything, just as people that bought their licenses. So salmon anglers went up there, they yeah. were through the roof. They would have, you know, they'd have taken people's heads off if they'd have got older. And what that's done is with advancing years, people falling off their perches like me, yeah. uh, nobody coming in and then they've changed the bylaws, so yes, you can fish for them, but you can't take a fish. And now you can only fish in very restricted ways on the Severn. They've more or less said to people, well, you can fish for them, but you're wasting your time because the methods you're using are unlikely to be of much use to man or beast. They're still catching a few fish down at Worcester on the top of the tide. They always catch more fish down at Worcester on the top of the tide, simply because that's where the fish get and they can't get over the weir. Right. Uh, but up here, there's nobody out. Yeah. Well, the last three people I've spoken to, I spoke to a, the chairman of the club I'm in about something yesterday, uh, Friday. He's a keen salmon boy. Um, and a bloke I saw at a trout pool last beginning of the week and the week with another one the week before all of them were salmon people and they're the same as me haven't got the enthusiasm don't know why they're, why they're bothering to go and then you put covid on top of it and the answer is there's nobody on the river really there's a mm. few but yeah not where it was when i started in the early 80s it's it, it it's almost it's almost dying on yeah. the seven some of the other rivers are not too bad, but our river, which is all I know really, uh, and it's a bit like that on the Welsh Dee as well. Um, uh, are no nobody's fishing the river, and it, it, it going back to your point about the estate, the amount of water that's coming up now for clubs to be interested in, in places that were old man shoes. Uh, it's beyond belief. You can you can get an entire estate's water for the square root of nothing at the minute. I went loading and it wasn't so much loading but sort of looking after one of my boss's son's friends on a shoot day a few years ago. And at the end of the day we went to um had a bit of a meal at a cabin. It was a lovely cabin over a lake. And literally you went up the boathouse and on top of the boathouse was the you know, dining yeah. area and kitchen and they had a balcony over the water. I looked over this water and the trout was just, and he said, it's not, we don't fish it. And I thought, yeah, I'm missing a trick there. I said, and I just thought, and there was some big fish in there as well. But the trout fisheries, you see, the trout fisheries are all struggling. All the commercial ones, most of the commercial ones around here have, have, have given up. The one up at Whitchurch is now a wedding venue. Cudden Trout Pool yeah. is now a, a carp lake when our club's got it. Is it really? There's, there used to be one down at um, by the Lawley, and I think that's finished. The one at Oni Vale's still going, I think, and the one at uh, Edgman, not Edgman, oh, I've forgotten its name, out on the out on the east, is still is just open. But uh, there's nobody, there's nobody fishing for trout anymore, and there's nobody fishing. Very few people fish for trout on the rivers. Really. What? Why is it? Because it's because of the work that's involved. Uh, partly that there aren't there aren't the fish, and partly you've got to put the time in. You you've got to you know especially on the seven. Salmon is, is a classic example. Yes, you can turn up in bits of the seven, and I've seen it done. People just turn up and chuck chuck something in, and away they go. And you know, guess what? There's a fish. But because it's not like other rivers because of its size and the nature of the river 
you've really got to know where the areas are, where the lies are. I used to, a friend of mine who used to, who got me into salmon fishing, we used to work together, and he and I could have a conversation which you would have thought was the strangest thing in the world. Because I'd say, see him in the morning and say, did you go last night? Yeah, where did you go? And he'd tell me which field he went to. And he said, but it wasn't the top bush, it was the second bush. And then, you know that weed bed just down from the second boat, it was just out from there, there was a fish there. And I knew exactly where he was talking about. If I'd have told you all from the other one, I'd a clue. But it, it, you, you'd, you'd almost got to serve, we well, still got to, an apprenticeship. Yeah. And the only way you could learn where the fish were was either to see them, catch them, or see somebody else catching them, or have somebody tell you. I don't, I've lost a friend last year um, who used to come to Scotland and we fished together for a long time. And he'd been fishing, he, well, he'd been fishing 60 years on the on the Severn. And we'd be somewhere and he'd say, see that tree down there? Yeah, I had a fish out of there about mm, such and such and it was that size and it was just off that, see the weed bed? It was just off that weed bed. Now, if you said to a course fisherman, where did you go and what did you do? They don't do that. But on the seven, you've got to know, certainly this part of the seven, you've got to know the lies. How to work it. You, you've got to work, you've got to serve an apprenticeship, you've got to put the time in and you've got to work out where they are. It's like your old stamping ground of longer. <laughs> yeah. I could, I could go down <coughs> there yard by yard and tell you <coughs> oh, where most of the <coughs> lies are on there. Well, not all of them, but most of them. Yeah. Because it's what you put the time on. Yeah, it's like everything though, isn't it? You know, it's the same when it comes to shooting. You know, I could say, well, there's no point doing that drive because they're just, yeah. they're not feeding uh, it at the moment. Absolutely. Or the deer have just run out of there, so the partridge will have gone, so yeah. you may as well go somewhere else. Exactly. But it, uh, the seven particularly, the bits of the Vern we are like it, but the Welsh Dee is a different thing altogether. The bits that I fished on the Welsh Dee are different. Because it that's more like a, a not a spate river, a, um, a bit more like a Scottish river in the sense that there are defined pools and runs. Well, unless it's very low water, you would be hard put to say on the Severn, where is there a pool and where is there a run? Really? Well, if you go back to Longna, there's one under the railway bridge, isn't there? Yeah. Down to down to the first deep hole, and then you've got the rocks. But there isn't another one until in front of the hall. Really? The next one after that is what I call the cow splash, just above Atchie. Yeah. Then you can go on down the river like that. But they're the only places you could get in to fly fish, for example. Everywhere else, you, with the banks as they are, there's no way you could get in. You think coarse fishing's taking the belly out of it as well a bit? You know, like you said, like obviously... Carp pools now at yeah. what's name? Obviously, that's where people people travel all country for. Yeah, and pay quite a lot of money for it. Yeah, they will. They will unless you're in a club who's got some decent water. Yeah, they do. But, but they're going to the big carp venues. You know, I mean, you know, it's on the television. Don't you yeah. know, Monster Carp and all that sort of thing. And they're also going abroad. Don't forget. I mean, people are now off down to Portugal and Spain and France and spending a couple of weeks. You know, catfish and, and all that yeah. sort of thing. And the game anglers, the other thing that's, game that's changed is that the game angler now, for the amount that you could you spend on going to Scotland for a week, you can get on a plane and go to Iceland and, and you'll be guaranteed, well, not guaranteed, but you'll be almost guaranteed fish. Yeah. And the same with Norway and so on. But it, and it, the transport is so easy now, whereas, you know, driving to Scotland and back is a bit of a chore. Well, you could fly, I suppose. But, most but even that's don't. a chore. I've done that. A couple of years ago, cause I've got a friend who's up um, at Granton on Grant on Spay. Um, I'm in the state That's there. A long old drive. Yeah, and I, I flew it, so yeah. I drove to my mum's and then flew out of Gatwick. Right. But to be honest, I'd have been better off just driving it because by the time I'd driven down to Gatwick, got my luggage set yeah. up, sat there, my plane had been delayed. Two hours. Got up there. Yeah. Then got picked up. It was a day anyway. Yeah, I know. Well, well I, my bit up in Scotland is 300, 330 miles from my front door. So that's six and a half hours each way. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> you could get to Iceland in that, le that length of time, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, the other ones, are, uh, well, game fishing, in, you know, the 
Caribbean and places like that have, have taken off. And people are fly fishing all over the place, you know. Yeah. I, people I know who are involved in Scotland regularly say, oh, I was in Argentina after the sea trek and there's a friend, a real good friend of mine has been to Canada, the, east, the west coast of Canada several times. And if you do that... Well, <laughs> A couple of days on the seven doesn't go down very well, no. really, does it? No. Would you, you like to come and have a day on the seven with me? Well, exactly. well how much water we got in? Well, it's probably about 14 foot on. And you think, no, oh, it's not on, is it? Mm. But, um, and that's also affected the, the course lads because the number of, when I started salmon fishing, um, all around the middle seven was just full at the weekend of match fishermen. Yeah. They, you know, they were still coming down from the northwest in, on coaches. Oh, yeah. And they would park up at Atcham and there'd be 40 of them get off and have a match and then they'd go home and uh, they were still doing that. Then it went down to, you know, they came in their own cars and all the rest of it. There are very few, there's some matches in Shrewsbury and there are one or two matches and some of the other clubs run but nothing much there's not huge numbers of people doing it and the only ones who are really fishing the river are the specimen fishermen the barbel boys are the the ones who are on the river now but there's not many of them no there are not many of the people people will come down for a weekend or something but nothing in the numbers that i used to see when i was i mean i'm still doing a bit of bailiffing but i mean and you could spend a if I started bailiffing at Shinton and got to the confluent, I'd have probably walked about 10 or a dozen miles and seen about 30 people when I started. You wouldn't see 30 in a month. You wouldn't see, you know, don't even see their cars. They're not doing it. No. The people just aren't, aren't doing it. It's easy to go to a pond and a uh, lake and sit there. You, and you've got to, yeah. Not work you know. for it. There's, it's stuffed with fish. There, there's there's vast amounts of food going in, so they're usually feeding, and the, your chances of getting a twenty pound fish are quite high. Yeah. Um, the idea of getting a ten pound barbel out of the river is once a year if you're lucky. Uh, a friend of mine who was well, a farmer who owns a shoot where I'm, I'm at now, he he's he's a keen fly fisherman, and um, he's got really big into catching carp. Right. On the fly. Yeah. And he thinks it's great. Yeah. He, to the point where he was going to dig his own pond and, yeah. and stock it. Yeah, there's a few doing it. Um, and Not he, many, a few. I mean, he, he's still going out after the trout and, and everything else. And he's just yeah. he's just booked himself a, like a, a holiday up up to Scotland and back, various different places yeah. fishing. Um, but yeah, he's got, got big time. And I think but he's, got, he's got MS, so I think the carp sort of give him that bit of fight, which he's... Yeah. Well, they do. They'll go. A big carp will go like stink. But yeah, it's never been never been something I've particularly been enthusiastic about no, carp fishing. But there Dad, you go. Dad was but, on uh, about it. Uh, people are, and I understand why they're doing it, and they spend a, a lot of time and a lot of, a lot of money on it. And but it's not for me. I I, I prefer the hunting style of, of yeah, you know, working for it and and, and moving. You know, we, 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 I'd start on a. Like longer, for example, uh, I it would be nothing for me on a Sunday morning to start by the railway bridge and end up down by the front of the hall, sort of thing. Yeah, you know, do the whole thing. Yeah, and probably fish it on the way back up and then go home. You know, but that would be it. But people, well, partly you can't get in because everything's now arable. There's no, there's no, uh, or very little in the way of, of livestock farming on the seven until you get sort of up around Welshpool. I'd say closer to Wales. Yeah, you've got to get out of out of Shropshire. There's a, still a bit at Melvilly and, and around, but mainly um, it's, it's now arable. And that's partly, that goes back again to what's happened in the past. Foot and mouth got rid of an awful lot of small mixed farms around here. Um, then BSE, or BSE, then foot and mouth more accurately. And the other thing that changed everything was they closed the sugar beet factory at Olscott. Right. And what that did was it 
broke the rotation for the arable boys and what they're now doing is growing maize yeah and a lot of that's for feed but a lot of it's going straight into the biodigesters and that's all they've had uh, they've started uh, on beet again now but they, that's going straight in mm. to be turned into electricity and what that means sorry I, so oh. done, what that means is um, the ground generally is left untouched after it's cut all over the winter until the spring when something like spring barley goes in because they don't finish cutting until October so it means that over the winter you've got bare fields you get a lot of rain the river is filthy silt in the river the next thing you know is all the gravels are covered with silt so even if if fish have spawned the, the gravel spawners have spawned the the eggs are probably dead because they're covered in silt really i didn't know that that's a well if if you i mean most that's why i was looking in the book most fish most salmon go to the headwaters or somewhere up around but there are rivers the one i go to in scotland is a good example where they will spawn um if the conditions are right particularly the late fish that come in you know they come in every month of the year as you know yeah. and the early fish tend to get up to the top early on and wait for the females and start did their spawning up there but the later fish will come in and they'll spawn where they can spawn and they spawn around in, in the middle of Shropshire uh, they don't all go straight up to the top um, and anyway the trout do that as well and what's happening is all this silt's coming off you know you go down and you, what you think is a nice gravel a gravel bit is no longer a gravel bit it's covered in silt my little brook out there um, we've had trout spawning on it for years it's a, just a tributary of the, the Cumbra and last year well for the last few years we've had high water through the winter this last year was worse than ever in that a piece of the bank or a large piece of the bank upstream disappeared and what were pools are now covered in silt they were 18 inches deep they're now flat across yeah and that's happening all the way down the river and it means that the, 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 the gravel spawners, which tend to be um, the game fish, all their eggs are at risk of being yeah, killed the because the oxygen isn't going running through the water, through the gravel. Okay. And, uh, but that's, that's you know, caused by things that fishermen can't control. Yeah. But it's caused by, by a change in farming practice. Yeah. And it's a, a, a long-term spin-off of foot and mouth. Yeah, wow. There we go. Foot the mouth's got lots of answers. Well, there you go. I mean, it, you, well, you've only got to go and stand on it and look at it. You know, you, it, <laughs> you look at the gravel and say, well, there was gravel here last time. It's no longer there. Yeah. It's gone. Or the nature of the gravel has changed or whatever it is. But Have you found with with the mo modern practicing, I was talking about this yesterday to the, the bloke I was talking about, his porridges. He was, he was saying about habitat. For the partridges, the, the young partridges need the insect life and the other. Yeah. So, with the shift in the way the farming is done, has that had an effect on the insects that are on, on the bank, or not on the banks, but you know, on the rivers, or has that not changed because the banks are still the same? Well, remember that. The, sorry, remember. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't have used that sort of language. <laughs> what What I mean is, if you think about um, uh, the salmonoids, the, grow, the, the, the game fish, yep. tr salmon, trout, sea trout, uh, grayling, although grayling's slightly different, they're all uh, fry that live on or in the gravel. The eggs are spawned into the gravel and they hatch and they live in the gravel, the water runs through the gravel and they're eating what's in and around the gravel. Little bits and pieces. That's what they, 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 they makes them into par. That's how they get from an egg to being something else. So if you've got, if you've got rivers that are silting up, then not only they, not only the eggs, but the fry and their, the stuff they're predating upon will be killed as well. Yeah. I mean, is it, we, uh, again, going back to my little bit of water outside, uh, the last few years we've had 
significant number of damselflies suddenly appeared uh, for very good, I don't know what the reason was, but there we are. There aren't any this year because it's silted up and guess what's happened? It's covered everything up. They're in the water, but they're dead. Yeah. Really? And we'll have to wait until it shifts again, until it comes back again and blah, blah, blah. But the outcome is that, you know, what's going on, shifting however it's done, shifting stuff off the land into the water is having an impact. Yeah, no, definitely. And then we've got the whole question of uh, gassanders and cormorants. And we, yeah. we could spend a constructive <laughs> hour and a half over that. But it's the same problem. I mean, you know, one of the things that's not, that really irritates me about the likes of the Environment Agency and NRW is they won't do the obvious things. They say that, you know, salmon, the salmonoids are in danger and extinction and all that sort of stuff and reducing. And it's true. And there are all sorts of reasons for it. But it always seems to me that in life, and certainly in, in fishery management, you can't control everything. You, know, you can't do anything about killer whales out at sea or killer whales in the Murray Firth or wherever, you know, and, and, and all that sort of thing. But you can control predators on the river quite easily. Yeah. The gassanders have multiplied on the river, certainly this bit of the river, uh, I can't tell you how many times. I'll give you an example. Spring, I was thinking about it before we, we were having our conversation. Spring last year, February, March, well, late winter, February, March, my wife and I were walking the loop in Shrewsbury, you know, around the river. Yep. You can do a loop, can't you? And we went from, it was on the east side of the town where the English bridge is, the one that goes out on the old A5. And from just above there, where the, the Ree Brook comes in, the tributary comes in, down to just below the railway um, station, where the weir is, which is half, three quarters of a mile, perhaps. I counted 25 gassanders. Really? 25, just sitting there. Two, three weeks ago, I went to um, a club trout pool up on the west of the county. It's about an acre and a half, got a little island on it, stocked, well, stocked. Uh, nice little pool, tends to get overfished a bit, but it's a nice little pool. Um, there were four cormorants on there at nine o'clock in the morning when I arrived. Now, <laughs> the whole business of what can we do about it, you could control that. Mm. Nobody wants to see the end of cormorants, but there are four sitting on a trout pool that people have paid good money to have stock does seem to me to be a bit of a, a problem excessive. and then you've got friends like country file who'll be saying and the other idiots of the world who'll be saying uh, oh dear oh dear you, well, you shouldn't be putting trout in there should you yeah but we are and that's it does it cost i done it's it's not it's it was released two weeks ago a podcast on uh, the norfolk ornithologist association and actually, ever since I've done a podcast, I've, I've seen I've pretty much mentioned this on all of them. Um, but it, I done my school work experience there when I was six, fifteen. Seems like a lifetime ago now. Yeah. Um, Not as long as my life. But <laughs> there you go. Um, and I spent two weeks making larsen cages, catching yeah. magpies, and also tunnel trapping stoats. Yeah. Because they wanted the rabbits to keep the, the soaps were killing the rabbits they didn't have many and they were trying to ki get the numbers yeah, up yeah, yeah. Mag magpies are doing damage on the yeah. on the birds and also when I was there they were looking at getting rid of a fox because that was causing a nuisance and that's on a bird reserve now if they can see that and and not obviously not want to kill the magpies but to, but to, to reduce the numbers yeah. for the habitat control it you know surely other people can see it but likes of Chris Packham can't and it's, and it's infuriating well, we, that we, the ignorance. We have a bird table out there. My, my wife loves it. it when we, we, over the, well, the last few years, we, the number of varieties of birds we've had on there has increased. And the number of birds, partly because it's been reasonably decent winters, but we feed it hard. And there's one down, down the orchard. And we feed it hard. But we get squirrels. 
dozens of the bloody things. Yeah. And the only thing you can do is to control them. And, and uh, you know, they're not just taking the food off the bird table. Fair enough, they're taking the food off the bird table. But you know that they're destroying nests. Yeah, taking the chicks, you can't have eggs. You can't have that going on all the while and then saying, oh, well, you know, that's all right then, isn't it? Well, it isn't. So I'm afraid I, I've got one out there. It's a, it didn't set at the minute, but it gets used. Yeah. I mean, the other thing that, 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 that irritates me greatly with the idiots of the Environment Agency and NRW is they refuse to stock the rivers. Uh, and they refuse to allow other people to stock the rivers. Yeah. And one of the arguments they use... Hey, welcome to part two of the Outdoor Man podcast on the fly. This is part two with Bernard. Like I said in the other one, go back and listen to that one if you haven't done. It's He's a great guy, um, really passionate about his fly fishing and the countryside. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's delve straight in. that was used by a fisheries officer to 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 somebody I know in terms of spawning and, and get into the reds. Well, the place I go to in Scotland, we had a manager, a lovely bloke. When, when I first started up there, he was there. And the syndicate, Andrew and some of us, um, pay his wages full time. And he used to run a little hatchery. It was basically a garage with some things running through. But he used to do, you know, 150,000 salmon eggs and probably 50,000 sea trout eggs. And they used to go in and we used to do it every year. And it gradually grew. And we we paid his wages and we financed the thing. And, you know, everybody thought we were doing a grand job. And it gradually grew and there was an improvement association formed on or became more active on the river. And a a bigger and better hatchery was found because everybody thought it was a good idea. And he used to spend an awful lot of time, no reason why not, on the hatchery. And we we were putting in regularly a quarter of a million and probably 100,000 most years, if we could catch the fish, um, of the sea trout. And all of a sudden, because of um, we we knew not what, but probably European rules or Scottish rules or Scottish government, not like in field sports or whatever it was, it got closed down, just like that. Yeah. It didn't cost anybody other than us yeah. a penny and the volunteers who were doing it. We financed most of it. All right, we had some support from the fisheries board, but basically it was being run by the river. And then, so they stopped it. Two years later, guess what? The new Scottish government rules on classifying rivers came into force. And our river was deemed to be not sustaining itself and meant that you couldn't take fish. So it was the lowest category. Yeah. Despite the fact that we'd been stocking it and they'd stopped us. And what was their answer? What were they going to do? They were going to allow, uh, do habitat regeneration and allow the thing to regrow naturally. Next thing that happens, beavers. No licenses issued, nothing. Suddenly the Tay system gets swamped, literally swamped, with beavers. Actual physical beavers? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I didn't know they'd released any. I knew there'd been talk about it. I didn't know there'd been any release. All over the bloody place. Really? Yeah. Every day's a school day. And uh, Well, they didn't get on a bus no. and drop off in the local town and walk down to the river, I'll tell you that. And they certainly didn't walk there because our valley up there is, the tops are about a thousand feet going east to west 
The river's in the middle, there's a lock at the top end, and there's an even bigger set of hills at the top end. To so finish them, somebody has put them there. Has tipped them over somewhere, and they did it in the Tay as well. Two years investigation by the Scottish Government. Guess what? Oh, they're there now, we'd better leave them. NRW, you will have seen in Shooting Times or somewhere or other, were spending £30,000 last year, year before, last year, on some research assistant wandering around Wales looking where you can reintroduce beavers. But will they stock the rivers with salmon? Will they let anybody else do it? So no. Obviously the beavers do a lot of damage to trees and various bits and yep. pieces. What, what? What damage do they do to the fish? They, 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 they Nothing take... to the fish, but what they do is they ruin the fishery. I need... That's part of it. Right. That's the map of it. Okay. Our, our little bit up in Scotland, it's got... It's two and a half miles and we've got more, more or less double bank. Okay, there are four beats on it. Uh, the top beat is a bit like... Bits of the Vernley and a bit like the D around Corwin. Not quite, but similar. Not quite as big, but that sort of meadow. Yep. The middle bit is... It's a strange bit of, 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 of country in that it's on the plate where the highlands and the lowlands meet. OK. Uh, and there's regularly earthquakes up there. OK. And the two plates rub together. And our middle beat is rocky and it's got gorges in it and it's got deep channels so the river will be as wide as this two rooms together but the flow is in a channel like this probably okay. 10 foot 12 14 foot deep when it's normal running so what happens at the bottom bit is pure rocky stuff a bit like um, parts of the conway and and some of the Welsh rivers, the, the rocky bits. And what happens is these branches and these trees come in and they're, because they've stripped all the bark off them and they're, so, they're waterlogged, they're down in the water, so they get lodged. And you're not allowed to move them. Right. Because the beavers have put them there. But you can't fish this gully now because there's trees in it or branches. So the damage they do it is not just to the riverbank, which a lot will regenerate because it's older. Yeah. And old, they don't have a lot of willow up. Well, we don't have a lot of willow up there. Yeah, it's mainly clean, older yeah. and it will regenerate. That's fair enough. We understand that. <coughs> but the banks are littered with sticks and branches and there's all this stuff in the water and you can't get rid of it. Amazing. You know I that? know. Well, it's fine. You leave it alone. You can't touch it. Of course we touch it and take it out because it's ruined the fishery. You know, people are paying to go there and, well, no, deep beavers. Why? I didn't know, I didn't know there was any relief. There's rucks of them on our stretch. That's probably, I, that's probably I stood outside our middle hut uh, last, not this May because it was closed, we, we couldn't go, the year before with my wife and we were standing out there at lunchtime just having a sandwich, looking at the river and the beaver was right in front of us. Just went straight down past the us, flapped and went down and appeared 20 yards below. They're all over the place. Wow. And the signs are everywhere. Yeah. And it, that's in three or four years that's happened. Yeah. Well, it's and funny, it, you, all illegal. I, 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 I spoke about badges a few times on my yeah. podcast. Not, it sounds like I've got a right prejudice against them. Maybe I have a little bit. Um, but when I was... Before, I left Norfolk when I was 18 to come over here to do my apprenticeship. And I had never seen a live badger. Right. And then moved to Shropshire, rife with them. And now back at home, it's rife with them. But and they, and they, they've just come in just as quick as you, you know, quick as you. I, well, you say you 18 when you came here and you've never seen one. I, I, in my life, I guess I'd probably, the first, 30 or 40 years of my life, I never saw one. Yeah. And I've lived around here all my life. You you knew there were some sets about, but you never saw them. You certainly didn't see them dead on the road. No. And you rarely saw them or any sign of them. You, you, I, I was aware there were some in some of the woods. 
but nobody ever said anything about it. They're everywhere now, all yeah. over the place. I've you can't go down there. You get a wet couple of wet nights, wet warm nights, and go down the road the next day. There's always a dead badger. Yeah, yeah. Most 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 roads you go down, you can't go a few hundred yards without seeing one dead somewhere yeah, on the lines. Go back down the road and up the road to Acton Piggott, and there's a set on the side of the road there. Yeah, Bloody I remember. Great big one. Yeah, I huge that. one. Still there. And they, well, it's fine if they want to have badges. That's fine, but. I suppose the one thing that's happened is that because of the demise of the small, the small mixed farms around here, the, the cattle have disappeared. We yeah. There's nobody got cattle around here. Very few. No, you one got... or two up in yeah. the hills, but not here. So you said you started with the fishing in the eighties. Yeah. Is that when you started started fishing? No, I started fishing like everybody else as a teenager, and then all sorts of other things came along, like cricket and football and. Women. Better not say girls, because my <laughs> wife might be upset. But you know, as, yeah. as teenagers do, you know, and, and I, I'm, I didn't, I didn't fish a lot as a, as a kid. And then when we came here, our kids were, one was nine, eight, seven, eight, nine, ten, something like that. The one was, and of course the stream was a magnet, wasn't it? And then he discovered there was a fish, and then we had to have fishing rods and. I got interested, and at the same time, as I say, I was I was working with a guy. The first time I worked with him um, within the department, um, he was keen salmon man, and he used to say, "Oh, I've been out, you know, come in at nine o'clock, and then oh, I've been out for three hours already on the river." And I remember one day he came in with a black plastic bag, and in it, it was a about a fourteen pound salmon that he'd just had. And he, somebody had said, can you get me a fish? And he got him a fish, so he brought it in for him. So we started talking, blah, blah, blah. And then he said, well, you ought to have a go. So I bought a rod. And eventually, um, he, he he was in several clubs. Uh, I joined some of them. Um, I used to fish down here, opposite Longner, and up at the, around the confluence. Um, and that would have been early 80s, just after we came here, two years after we came here and did the work, or most of the work on the house. Uh, and then I joined the the club and I gave up all the others and I've only ever been in that ever since, simply because they've got so much water around the place. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, I used to do, well, with him, I used to do a day at the weekend and probably two nights in the week if it was if it was going with if there was fish about. I don't know, it's just mad. I've been every I amount of time I spent yeah, I amount of time I spent, you know, was just stupid. It was ridiculous. And I that went on he fin he gave up in the end for he wasn't very well, but anyway he gave up. And I, I met, well, I knew this other bloke who, who um, I started going round with simply, you know, we shared a car. And he was the guy who'd been fishing even longer. And he eventually bought up in Scotland as well. But, yeah, I, so I've been at it since the early 80s. I, I used to, do, well, I'm still a bailiff, but I, I used to do an awful lot. We used to do, um, I used to do about 15 working parties a week, uh, a year. Yeah. 15 weekends we used to do all over the place, did all sorts of stuff. But uh, that's gradually, as my back, arms, hands, knees have de deteriorated, that's probably disappeared a bit. Still do a bit. I usually do, when the game fair was on, I used to go for the club there, do one or two bits for them, uh, uh, but I don't do the bailiffing or the fishing I used to do. I, can't, I And to be truthful, this year has been an awful year and for everybody, but... Yeah. I really can't get the enthusiasm. I, I it, it, it's, it's the hunting bit. I, I'm sorry. I, I, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to go hunting. That's yeah. all I do. <clears throat> yeah, work for always it. Ever, yeah. Always have done. It There's was an that, achievement it was to that, it, was that. Was I, 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 The guy who used to be our manager up in Scotland used to shout at me because if I went out sea track fishing at night, I'd only got to have to catch one and I'd go. And he said, where'd you go? They were obviously there. And I said, well, I wouldn't get any more pleasure out that's of what's two. That's what's called hunting, isn't it? Not, not I, killing. I, I wouldn't get any more pleasure out of two 
than I did out of one. Yeah. I've got a really nice fish. I had a really good experience. I had to work for it. I've gone home. Same when I go trout fishing. I, I'm not a trout fisherman. I'm not very good at it. But I go trout fishing simply because, you know, the river's closed and I go to the pool. And sometimes you turn up and it's just been stocked. And there are people who will stay there all day and catch 25. And they can only take one. Yeah, that's the point. And I, I get to the... After I've been about three or four, I think, what? why, what, why am I doing this? Yeah. You know, what? am I going to get any more, more pleasure out of the next two than I've had out of the ones I've got already? I may as well just say, well, I've had a nice morning. Thank you very much. Well, that's a couple of hours. Thank you very much. I'll go and do something else. Dad's like that. Dad's a keen fly fisherman. And, and I've, as you know, I've got a rod, because the last time we spoke, actually, was when I was looking to get a rod, um, which has been used a grand, like I said, I count on one hand, how many times I've been eight. Um, but it was only to go with Dad. And do you know what? Dad would go for a couple of hours just to get away from the dogs, get away from work. If he catches something, he catches something. Yeah. If he doesn't, he yeah. doesn't. And if he catches three, yeah. great. If not, yeah. great. And that's, the way it and that's the way it should be. I've gone three years without catching a salmon. Really? Yep. Started in February, finished in October. Three years running. Bloody hell. I, I can't say I was ever anywhere near a fish. I didn't really? care because I would go next time and I'd go and see if I could. Yeah. And it was the hunting thing. It did yeah, it, it bugger all to do with catching. I mean, I was thinking about it. The most salmon I've ever caught in a day was three. And I can't say the third one gave me any pleasure. No. I just caught it because I happened to be there. I, other than, the only time I've done more better than that was not sort of serious fishing. I used to go up to Scotland to, for when we had the hatchery, we, they discovered, they used to do electrofishing, and then they discovered that they were causing damage to fish by the spotting, yeah. damage in the spine. And they worked out that the treble look in the mouth was less damage to a fish than electrofishing. I remember you going and doing this. Yeah. So I was, we, I'd been at Longner at the yeah, time. Yeah, I, I used to go up. Well, my, son, my son used to come with me. We used to go up in November-ish, and there'd be about eight or ten of us who'd split up between various beats that we were allowed to go on, not just ours. And two of us would fish together. We'd both, we'd both have spinning rods. We'd have a net between us. We'd fish more or less together, and we'd go like stink through, through a beat, right through, <laughs> as fast as you can, catch what you can, and get on, you know, yeah. no messing about. Hit them hard, heavy, yeah. heavy line, get them out, get them into the net, and then decide what to do with them. And I've caught rather more than three doing that. Yeah. But that was for a purpose. Yeah, it was a conservation reason. It was not a conservation a... thing. The more you catch, the more you... And, you know, you about two o'clock in the afternoon, you get a message saying, don't catch any more cockfish, we've got 25, we don't need any more, we're after the hens. So you, you, you change your style, wouldn't you? But... but I, I, but as I say, the, the three is, I'm sure it's three, is the most I've ever caught. And if I caught three, two or three a season, I would be extremely cheerful. And I'd still go out the next day. No, I couldn't care less whether I caught one or not. But I, I was the hunting bit. That was a that was bit that we've got me with the foxhounds and, and the eagle falconry. Not that I'm doing it this season. But I love watching the foxhounds work. Yeah. Uh, whether it's a, whether it be flushing to me yeah. or a drag, yeah. even the bloodhounds. You used to love watching the bloodhounds work. You know, when yeah. the runner go off and you'd see the hounds working. Oh, I can understand and, that. And, and, and that. And then from there, obviously the eagle, where you slip the eagle on the hair or the, the fox oh, yeah. or the munch yeah, yeah. And to see that would be. It's it was that bit between release and catch or miss, depending on what happened. That was a bit I loved. I didn't yeah. care whether she caught no caught it. I mean, it was good for her, for yeah. her morale. Yeah. But that her work in it, and and it's earning, the hunting earning it, and it was and it was actually always and it, got it's, me. It's admiring. It's it's, a, it's one of the reasons I don't tell people I go beating because I don't get any money for it. <laughs> uh, it's one of the reasons I enjoy beating yeah. is I love watching dogs work. Yeah. I love watching a sp the enthusiasm of a good mine, spaniel. Mine's too far in front. Well, I, <laughs> I know, I remember. No, I, I, but I, I love seeing a good dog working a piece of cover, you yeah. know, and, and, and uh, or, or picking up, there's a guy who comes to the, the shoot. Uh, oh, remember Keith Carter? Yep. Well, oh, Keith Carter's still knocking around. He's had his legs done, but he's still knocking. Well, he's hope he is. The last time I talked to him, he was okay. But, 
he watching him and his dogs and he's controlling three or four around his feet yeah. when he's picking up. It's just... Even Blackie, it pains me to say it, and I'd never admit yeah. it to him. No, either. his dog was just brilliant. I could yeah. watch I could watch his dogs all day. And another dog I always love watching, and actually I preferred, I preferred watching him work his dog, was Mick. Yeah, yeah, because, Mick was good. Because his dog was good, but Mick would be so up about working the dog, yeah, yeah, it would yeah. be great watching him at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, and it was that, I, I, it's exactly that. And it, it, it's seeing something being done properly by something that's been trained and properly bred for the job uh, I, I and it's the same with the hunting thing it, it's it, it's not it's not getting vast numbers of something down on the ground no. I, I couldn't do we always say have beaters days I couldn't go and stand at a shoot where you're going to have 250 birds and you just keep shooting. It's not. That's not me either. I, I can't would, do that. The wildfowling. I loved, I always loved the wildfowling. Yeah. And and that's I suppose from granddad that was pushed into yeah. me. And working, if you've got half a dozen, you thought you were doing really well. If I come off, old. if I come off, if I come off the um, off the um, mark for the goose, I had a bl- I had a bloody brilliant morning. You could stand outside my place and wait for the goose. I'll to tell you what, yeah, last night when I was having tea. Some geese come over. Bloody hundreds of them. The that pool over there at Mosley and that one over there. But yeah, I, but it's that's it exactly. I, 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 if I got the money, I wouldn't pay to go to stand. My stepdad works from for well, well, a well, a well do family in Wimbledon, and he's just got into a shooting in a big way, and he's paying. They were, I, think, I think it was grouse shooting. They were going to drive by drive on a helicopter. It was it was mental money being spent, and my stepdad got asked to drive him th- pretty much through the night to a shoot up in Newcastle. Not a problem. So he had to drive him up after he had a, went went to a party, picked up after the party, drove up pretty much through the night, and then shoot the next yeah. day. They got a bit of sleep, but not not masses. A gun didn't turn up, so my, my stepdad's boss was. Was, was very kind to Simon and said, do you want to shoot? And he paid for the day. Well, he, they shot the Friday, 500 bird day, stood there and pulled the trigger all day. Then the next day, they had a 300 bird day, if not a little bit more, and then he shot the morning because they went to watch Newcastle play right. Chelsea in the afternoon. And Simon said, you know, it was amazing, it was this, it was that. I went, did you enjoy it? Yeah. He went, well, he said, yeah, I did. I don't get to do that. I said, no. I said, but but did you enjoy it? And and the long and short of it was, it, it was all right. And I, it, I wouldn't pay. I mean, admittedly, don't you mind. If someone said, here you go, Dan, if it's free, can I have a go? I'm sure I'd stand there and pull the trigger. I'm sure for the experience, you'd go. Yeah, but it, but it, you wouldn't do I it wouldn't, every I wouldn't, day. I wouldn't be paying I would, for I it. Couldn't. Oh, no, I couldn't. The, one of the most, my most favourite memories of all time of shooting is, I used to go up to Balmile every every year with the gun dogs when I left school, especially when Dad used to go up. My favourite two days of the year was the 12th and the 13th yeah. because it was a walked up day. Yeah. And they didn't, Balmore don't sell any days, but they sold um, to a guy called Frank these two days. And it all be walked up. So they had the ponies out with the panniers on with all the lunch and the drink on. Yeah. We'd walk out and then walk the, you know, the, the hill back, back to the motors. And it was just brilliant. Watching the dogs yeah. work. Yeah. You know, grouse yeah. would get up in front. It's the experience. Yeah, and they didn't... And if, if there's a few birds, that's fine. With yeah. that sort of shooting, you don't hit everything do either. But I, I'd go and stand on a peg and shoot 300. I wouldn't know. It'd drive me mad. Yeah. I, 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 well, I don't shoot other than on beaters days. I, I, uh, very kindly, people will lend me a gun. But I, I, you know, it doesn't bother me. I'd rather just beat and, and, watch, and watch the dogs. And it's the same with the fishing. I, I you know... I, I said to the guy I rang the other day, in fact, our chairman. Um, I, I've got to the stage now. I don't want. I'm. I'm not thinking about salmon at all now. I just want to get to the end of this month, and then I'm going to start grayling fishing because yeah. I enjoy grayling fishing. There's yeah. no pressure on it. You just do it for fun. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. what it's got to be. It's got to be funny. If you enjoy <coughs> it, there's no. Point and if there's it. no, if I don't get any pleasure out of it, I'm doing it. But I got no pleasure, I got no pleasure out of killing ten as opposed to two. I just, uh, and it wouldn't make any difference what it was. I lost my love for the for the foxhounds with with the bird because my job was to be up in front and and, and attempt to catch that fox with the eagle. Yeah. But that isn't always happen like that. And I'd be getting moaned at. Oh, why weren't you in front? Or oh, why weren't you there? Why weren't you here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or why are you too far yeah, in front? Yeah, yeah. Too far in front. You can't be too far in front. Yeah. But apparently you can. 
I got fed up of I got fed up of being spat at by aunties. Yeah, yeah. And and sprayed with citrine yellow spray, and and being called a murdering bastard. Yes. Um, and I just got and I get fed up of being moaned at in the politics. And I thought, you know what? No. I'm done. So no. I bought I bought another push bike. I'm following the hounds on a push bike. My daughter can come with me. If it's a crap day's hunting, I haven't got to go. I'm go not obliged on. to go. If it's wet, I can go home. Go and do it for pleasure. Yeah, and, yeah. and get the love back for it. And this is the one thing that the podcast has brought back for me because I was starting to hate the countryside and resent it quite quite a lot because obviously yeah. the keeper inside of things is, is demanding yeah, on yeah. your social life and your home life. And talking to other people about the countryside and, and, and all the other bits and pieces has really sort of brought me back to yeah, yeah. back. To well, it. I, it is. It, it's, I mean, it's one of the things I used to get out of, of, um, of doing all the working parties. We... we the guy who got me into fishing, uh, he was a bailiff. In fact, he was a bailiff when I started fishing. And because we went round together, he, he kept saying, well, you'll have to come and give me a hand to put these signs up or mend this fence or do something. <laughs> and after about two months, he said, you ought to be a bailiff. I'll get, I'll sort it out. So I suddenly, I'd only been in for like less than half a year and I was suddenly a bailiff. Voluntarily. And, but we used, to, we used to sit down every year and we'd say, well, you know, which waters have we got? What's wrong? During the year when we saw people, we'd say, what do you want doing here? Or somebody would say, see that tree? You know, bloody branch there is a pain in the butt. And we used to we used to, to yeah. rock rock up with a chainsaw and all, and do it. And we'd get 20 or 30 blokes to come and give us a hand. And we, we used to plan it. I'd built a lot of holts before now. And <laughs> they think, oh, everybody's saying, oh, yeah. Otters. Bloody hell, we've been doing things for otters around here for years. Years and years I've been doing it. And, you know, that, that's the way. But I used to get a lot of fun out of uh, enjoyment. Out of I get shouted at for, you're not doing another one this weekend, are you? <laughs> the kids want to go, uh, yeah. well, I've said I'll go. So. <laughs> but, yeah, I, you know, it takes time. You know, yeah. People don't have time. They don't want to do it anymore. But uh, I'm afraid that the body, the, the, the spirit is willing, but the body is becoming increasingly weak. Uh, so a, a lot of name. that is the spirit. I mean, I still enjoy talking to people on the riverbank. I mean, I, I've been, th I'd rather like you, I've been threatened a few times by people who shouldn't have been where they were. And I learned very early on that you, you always kept the, them between you and the river. And it, it helped if you were wandering around with... Uh, something that looked vaguely like a radio, yeah. and it was even more help if you got a, a camera in your pocket, because yeah. you could say, well, I, I've got to go somewhere else now, but I've got to report to the committee, so I'm afraid I'm going to have to do it. So can you just look this way? Thanks very much. And walk <laughs> and go. And you could bet your life five minutes later they're gone. Yeah. Always. And they just, you know, just... With, I just ignore them. With lockdown, I don't know, and I don't know how the bailiff would have found it for the fishing, but or or people in general. But a friend of mine um, on a big shoot at home, and lockdown started. And he said, "I've got people where I've never had people before." Yeah. He said, "You're just finding people everywhere. Yeah. You just can't do your job." No. He said, "You're just forever yeah. hurting people off." And then he said, "Well, I've got the right to roam." No, nope. no, nope, you haven't. Let's let's give you an education before I fuck you off. And. Oh, well, church bill at Atcham. There's been there's been more people on the beach there when the river was down uh, during all of that than ever. There's been anglers on it, kids, little ones swimming, and I. The number of times I've thought I better go down and say, look, don't go in there because you'll die. Do you know how deep it is just down there? And uh, leave them alone. You could, I've tried that before now. You just get told where to go. Yeah, yeah, I. I've been down there before now on a Sunday afternoon. Oh, you, some years ago this was by myself, fly fishing. Bloody great treble look on the back, 15 foot rod. Uh, going down the run, fishing away. And I suddenly became aware that there was people about. I turned around and there was a bloke 10 yards behind me standing like this with a camera. I said, what the what are you doing? He said, oh, I was just taking a photograph. I said, do you know what's the end on the end of this line? What do you mean? So I showed him, I said, well, if I stuck that in your eye, yeah. what would you say? Or well, anybody part wouldn't exactly yeah. be uncomfortable. I said, you know, if you, I'm, I'm, my casting isn't the greatest thing in the world, as many people will have commented before yeah. now, but at least it goes back there and then goes that way. But I tell you what, if a 15 foot catches you the back of the ear 
with a treble look, you do yeah. know about it. Yeah, yeah. But I would have no idea. And a number of times I've been down there and somebody's come down with their kids and the bloke's come up to me and said, are you staying? Yeah. Why? Well, I'm fishing. Well, can't you go somewhere else? Why? Well, the kids want to play in the water. <laughs> really? Fuck oh, off. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, no I, you can't stop them. That's the thing. Everybody right. now thinks they've got rights and they've got no responsibilities. Yeah. And uh, up there, it's, it's a real problem because, of course, the Scots have given everybody the right has to... Got, they've got the right to roam. And they go where they like. Yeah. And we, our, our middle hut, we had a toilet, a portable toilet outside. And guess what? Our portable toilet was broken into and was being used regularly by trashed. people going up and down, trashed. Yeah. And you think, oh, what? And you, a number of times I've walked down and there's been people sitting on the seats. And you think, hang on a minute, whose seat's that? <laughs> oh, well, you know, we were just walking past. Uh, can't yeah. be doing with it. Still, but but no, so going back to the salmon, the salmon on the seven is a sorry position at the moment, I'm afraid. There will be people who, who will tell you slightly differently. There's the lads who are down, or well, the lads, the old gentlemen mainly, who fish Worcester um, are, are are probably catching a few, and there's, all, there's always one or two up and down the river, but nowhere like the numbers there were. I mean, the one thing that they, they, they are beginning to do, and it's, it's the thing called the Seven Rivers Trust is, is behind it, um, They've now put in, in a big fish pass at Worcester. But it wasn't for the salmon, it was for the shad. Mm. Right? So, because they couldn't get over the weir. So tell the salmon and salmon fishermen, we'll just get the shad back. Why? Well, conservation. Nothing to do with fishing. No. They're not interested in fishing. We're dinosaurs, basically. Uh, there's an old cynic talking. Yeah. That's probably enough. Right. I'll say thank you very much. Push that button. Right. Thank you.